science class or English, and they're just reading out of the book, um, you know, before they uh, before they teach class the next day. So, who are those? You know, who are your who's your staff? What are their strengths and weaknesses? How can you um, really anticipate to use their strengths um, to your best advantage? Right, as being the leader. Uh,
Yeah, like Matt said, you're going to break it down, kind of see the whole schedule, and then you find that piece. So he said from first game or first practice to first game, and then breaking it down from there. Understanding that lots of times, you know, after this, um, you know, after this preseason, you're getting ready for games. So this, you know, two, three weeks might be the only time where you have you can really put in the basic fundamentals that you want to work throughout the year. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> um, so with this, Matt touched on it, riding, clearing, all that, but then putting in the drills and the on it. So um, for us, a couple of things, two hands on ground balls, and you drill that home as much as you possibly can. Turn the ball, you never catch and turn to the inside. That's where the bad guys are. Catch. Anybody ever screws that up, no matter who the player is or what's going on in practice, you these are the, this is the opportunity because again, after this first game, from what we know across the country, you'll have two or three games in a week. You know, so it's basics and focus on us. It's constant preparation for other teams. Now, now it's time to put in kind of what makes you guys who you are, and what makes you guys different. Uh, post practice fundamentals, or pre practice and post practice, figuring out things, specific groups. Maybe it's um, one practice, the attack gets there early, and you have the action. After that practice, middies will stick around. And start think thinking about things like that where you can get a smaller group of guys and work on whatever it is you think that group needs to be able to work on. Whether it's um, getting the ball around the outside, middies, downhill dodging, or breaking back. Defensemen working on your slide packages and communication. Goalies under but understanding what you're looking for in the clear. That's the opportunity, again, that you can work with the smaller group, again, before or after practice. It's hard at the level that we're not used to coaching, the high school level and the youth level, is that you guys are always kind of constantly preparing because you only have one or two days to play, whereas we usually have three or four. We play on Saturday, then we can, Monday can be on ourselves, Tuesday can be, you know, we need to get better at, and then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we start preparing for our next opponent. Whereas you guys, so as Coach Crotty said, um, you know, you guys have to do a really good job in the pre culture of what it is that your team is based upon. You know, what are your fundamentals? What, what's your true north? So you can touch on it while you're preparing. You know, so like when we say own practice up there, that's you know, that's our understanding what exactly they have to be good at, right? Each, everybody has to master their individual position. So each attackman knows, hey, I got to be able to do this. Double the ball. Each midi knows he's got to be able to feed with both hands. Each defenseman's got to be able to pick up the ball off the ground, right? So like, that's the own practice stuff. As the season gets going, and you get into this micro portion where you start to focus on preparing for your opponent, the guys go out there and they know what it is they have to work on. You don't have to spend and practice on that stuff. That can be done pre or post practice in the mornings, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's, it's much more difficult at your level because you're kind of constantly there in terms of working on your own team and preparing for your next opponent. Where we have a within the actual practice where you guys might have to break that up between post and pre, and water breaks or before school or that kind of stuff. Uh, as we segue in here, uh, we're just going to answer a couple of questions. Twitter sphere. And uh, first of all, Mark uh, Smith, thanks. If you wasn't able to hear the audio on YouTube, but uh, he was aware and troubleshooting. Meredith Reader, who is the great production, filmer, um, sports information we know here, um, is aware of it. She troubleshot and it's been repaired, correct? She troubleshoot. Could be it too. All right, so uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, Paul Mahoney from Denver South High School uh, is watching, and he says he lets his play club high school uh, or what it was club school. Make yourself into Division One player. Someone will take you. Uh, and if do you agree or am I all wet? If you Paul, Paul player, it doesn't matter where you go to school or what club you're on. I think that's correct, yes. Coach Caputo, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, and the answer is yes. If, if you can tell 
is that we would all agree with you that if you could figure out if that student you know, learn the game, have great stick skills, get himself in terrific shape, be a, uh, somebody will find him. Now, he, here's the deal. There's a lot of competition in this market, and there's only 75 schools that play Division I lacrosse. There are 70 schools that play Division II lacrosse uh, the other day, and there's over 200, well over 200 that play Division and, and those schools are, are all terrific. You know, Division three is not, is not a step down for a lot of the education that you're going to get, your social experience, and the kind of want to win just as well, or they, want to, they play just as hard as the kids who play at Division one. So you can also tell your kids that there are plenty of places um, if the Division one thing just doesn't work out. We go to team meetings, all right? So this is the first thing. I'm going to turn this over to Coach Caputo here in a second. But this is one of those things where times you're either stealing time or you're making time. In other words, maybe, uh, you don't have the field until 4 o'clock and you have a, a period, you know, maybe you have 30 minutes uh, where you can meet with your team. Uh, maybe you're waiting a scrimmage and before you get on the bus you have time to talk to you it's a Friday night you know maybe it's a uh, a night before a game and you want to have a team meeting maybe it's at, maybe it's at the school uh, you know maybe it's you know wherever it is maybe it's pre-game you know it's uh, you play and so right after school before the kids go home first or you or whatever it is, but so we call it either stealing time or making time to, to meet with your players and to go over various aspects uh, so everybody gets on the same page. Okay. What, these meetings, when do they take place? It could take place before this practice, it could get snowed in, you could get rained in. So are you going to make good use of that time? Are you going to be prepared? I'm going to start from the the standards of your program. So if you ask your kids, like, hey, what are your, what are your goals for the year? You want Bible, whoever that might be, or they may say, we want Did you mute yourself? Uh, I have the same one, Ned. Ned did not. Which he did. Got me now? You may want to start over. I'm going to start from the beginning. You muted it. You muted it. Okay. So here we go. Team meetings, when do they take place? Is, is this a preseason meeting? Did your first practice get rained out, snowed out? Are you prepared to be productive and making good use of your time, even if you're not on a field? So I'm going to start from the bottom here uh, with standards and, and what are standards? It's a great idea to, to start with that, your first meeting. Um, if you would ask your players what their goals are for this would say they, they would like to beat their rival. Uh, we want to go undefeated at home. Uh, we want to win the championship. And, and that's their goal. That's where they want to be. But the standards are where you Okay, and in between these two things is, is you and your staff. And coaching and teaching and, and mentoring and sometimes yelling, sometimes patting on the butt, whichever kid needs, but they need to understand there's a difference between what they want and what they need. And I think that's the best time to, to make them understand this standard B. Well, um, like when I was in high school, we had a walkway to practice on cement, and as soon as the cement ended, we weren't We had to jog. And uh, my coach got it from Coach Hofstra. It was one of the first was it coach? First AstroTurf fields, one of the first few. Hofstra had an AstroTurf. Cross players walked out of the locker room. The second they touched the turf, they were, out. They were in a jog. They were in a, a backpedal. They were in some sort of, and when they got water, they stepped off the turf and they could, could walk. But the standard was on that field, they were moving. So that would be a standard. How, how we move in between. How do you handle yourself when you're injured? Coach, I'm hurt. I still want to help the team. Well, your job is to help the trainer. Get 
all those standards can be set in the first meeting so that the first time someone gets hurt or the first time something happens, you don't have to say, hey, this kid didn't do anything. He's just sitting over there in a sweatshirt. What can he do for a standard? Offensive players, if you're injured, you're getting the ball. Well, defensive players, if you're injured, is, um, make sure they know. It's not a bad idea to go over the What time do they have to be there? On time, early, early work, practice starts at this time. Do they have extra help? When they should tell you they have extra help? You need to know the day before, you need to know the day of. Now, I, mean, I used to show up to the school and I would say, where's this guy? Oh, he's got extra help. Where's this guy? Oh, he got detention. I, I didn't like knowing that at the end. Now we're out a little bit sooner. And this, this clear and clean communication. Kids, when you tell kids the truth, they gravitate to you. Whether they love what you tell them, they gravitate to you. Okay, so you're going to start out the first, the first, so they have this respect for you right here. Okay, and the more truth you tell them, the more they come to more and, and endear you a little bit more. And the more you make them a better player, you become beloved. But if you lie to them, giving them a line, you go to being tolerated, and from by the end of the season. And that's when the season ends and the kids in the that this is over versus no matter what your record is, your team is crying, getting better. You knew you were playing your best on, on the last day and that clearing. Uh, the whiteboard. Some of, your, some of your kids will be more visual. We had a freshman come upstairs today and he told Coach Janowski, hey, you know, I'm a more visual learner than I am an audio learner. And we said, great, because the other stuff isn't working with you. We really appreciate that. So we, we started um, going over some things and, and see what happens when he gets back from break. But that was really fun. Um, it was great for kids. They love it. They feel that, like, especially watching, um, watching themselves, because they don't always know when they're making these errors. And they're, they're sometimes surprised. Watch you watch. And then, and then, the, then you, then you when you explain to them why you're doing the drill, say, hey, remember when you did that? We're doing this now. You see it a lot, uh, a lot in pick play, pick defense and things like that. You know, uh, Matt will say to an offensive player, hey, you, you push off of your guy and, and arrive to the pick detach. You just were lazy. Was I? No, I didn't think. And then you saw on a film and, you know, film doesn't lie. Great teacher and it's, it's really valuable. But I it is in the first week. In the, you know, like this is getting cl this. The film is to the game week when you want to show them a little bit of themselves. Um, practice plan after you just finished practice. Okay, let them know. It's not a bad idea to say, hey, you know, in the first segment we were just okay. We didn't have great energy, um, and then and then we started picking it up because I yelled at you or whatever. It and you can even say to the kids, hey, I realized I didn't have a great practice plan. The first drill came out with some ground ball or some fast paced thing to get you guys energized so that they hear you say, you I made a mistake. That's a great tool with young boys. Young girls too, I'm sure. When you admit that you made a mistake doing something, they look at that and they appreciate it for sure. Um, if it practice and you have a few minutes go over with them what you're going to try to get in you can now we're going to get out there in about 25 minutes i'm cutting this this and this because in order to be ready for the first game we have to clear the ball so we have to do these drills or we have to work on the face off game so we have to do this we're going to scrap this because i think we did a pretty good job the day before and we can afford to maybe miss this thing because we're, we're short a little bit so you can go over what you want to do if you are stuck and you're in the room with them, create a test. Now, make it really easy. You want them to fail it. Okay? So, easy questions. The ball's on the ground on the offensive end. Scoop, pass, pass. Scoop, pass, pass. What do we do when the ball's on the ground in the middle of the field? We run through it. Run through the ball. What do we do when the ball's on the ground defensive end? We run, scoop and run the daylight. So, if they can... 
to those three questions about the ground ball play, boom, you got yourself a test. Defensively, how do we approach the ball? Between, I put, simple. Offensively, how do we handle pressure when we catch the ball? Turn to the outside. All these things and these tests, repeat what you say, which is really coaching. When they say what you say, um, you can ask them, what, what was the score of the rivalry? The rivalry game the last three years. The seniors will know that more than well the older kids, the younger kids. You know, X is an O. Yesterday, um, coach now three on three. Where does the midi go in the crease when, when the man dodges the alley? Have them come up and draw it for you. And then see who knows it. And who doesn't know it, then you spend maybe a little bit more. But I, I think you can still have a really good experience indoors or in a team meeting and get a lot out of it with your team. It's good to uh, establish a relationship, ask them about their brothers and sisters, care, and then like the next day you may say, hey, you know, you, you said something about your little brothers. That matter a lot to the kids. Cool. All right, we have, uh, we have something else here from, thinking, uh, we got something here from the Twitter sphere, but uh, it also got me thinking um, uh, about what Coach I think of John Wooden from time to time, and I think about the, the, the great love of Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton had for the man. It's about winning. It's so, trans, it's so far transcended winning and losing um, as what he did for them and what he taught them. And what comes a lot of references to it, you know, over the course of, um, you know, over the was what is it that you stand for and what is it that 10 years from now? And not necessarily the cross related, but you know, on time. Man, we didn't show up on time. Um, you know, coach either kicked you out, you know, he gave it to you, you know. Uh, the other day, uh, one of our guys was telling us that he went over to a, I won't name the name of the graduate school, but he set in on a class. And one of our guys said, half of the class showed up late. That was, a, to me, that's a reflection on the professor and either on the professor, or, you know, it's a little bit of indictment on the students as well, but a little bit as, and uh, also Tom Polisi, who was actually um, a second name who played for us two years ago. Tommy told us about one of his professors, who if you show up a second late, he'll kick you out shows up late for that class um, and there's a standard and that's something that those future lawyers will remember is you show up on time you show up on time you know for an appointment you show on, you show up on time for the judge or else things aren't going to work out so well for you you know in your profession so you know again I think there's a there's a lot of neat things that go on here talking about um, that will carry over to a young person's uh, you know all right, here we go. So uh, we have, um, and by the way, uh, Montana, which man, I love, I, I love, well, home of Ron Heller, former Farmingdale great, Penn State great, Miami Eagles, Miami Dolphins, and more importantly, brother-in-law to coach Ron Caputo our priorities, you know, we were going from smaller, we were building up there to the highest accolade. All right, we had another question here in, uh, about injuries. Um, you know, anything that you guys do, and one, if we go back to our staff, uh, we are very mindful of everything, we just say, go see our um, But we, we try to put an emphasis on stretching, we try to continue to lift two days during the week, lift and stretch. Um, earlier, we we'll do that on a Monday and a Wednesday. Um, we, we try to do um, during a lot of practices. You know, there are some drills where all whistle in our mouth. And so if we see a potential collision, it's potentially unhealthy with our experience, we'll blow that. Want the, we want the energy and we want the commitment to, to 
you know, will recognize those plays. Um, and, and so is there anything in terms of uh, preventing injury? Stretching and the, and we'll listen to Joe. We listen to our trainer. Um, all these days where, you know, we don't do as much. Now there's a lot of different stuff being written now. Where the, the, the easiest day of the week maybe is and the day before the game, you're supposed to go just as hard as you would on game day, you know, to get into that rhythm. And, and so it really kind of matters on what you kind of read and what you're right now. Um, and sometimes it's just luck. You know, you have some kids who are gumby get hit and bounce right back up. And some kids who are a little bit more susceptible to those bumps and bruises. We try to teach our guys and they try to learn in college the difference between injured and just being sore or just having a little bit of pain being able to play through those the sore or are you actually hurt where you need help and you need to and and you know take the time off and, and to see the trainer so try to work with as well especially early in the season all right preseason pre-practice pre-practice segment of time where hey I have a job and I can only get there at five o'clock so you guys get out there like at 4 30 so instead of just hanging around you can do some things that we can give you during the I teach full time I, I teach eighth period by the time I go down I get out there it's three o'clock I know school gets over at two are on the field early and so here is what we call a pre-practice either on their own doing their own work or being supervised to coach Ned Crotty yes yeah, so I talked about this a little bit before. um kind of you know like JD just said they kind of things you give these guys to work on so if you have a lot of guys that coach Peter was work after school or you know guys get out guys get out there between 4 30 and 5 them something to work on so with our guys uh, I'm really big with the wall you know I just think you can get so many more reps obviously in practice we're doing obviously drills with each other but um, we give all of our offensive players a do that's not just uh, standing there and throwing the ball against the wall which is doing the things that we teach getting out with their feet and being able to focus on their form and fundamental are where their eyes are uh, getting out with their feet and turning one of the big things is the faster your head turns, the faster your body turns. So all these little things that we kind of uh, next level type stick work, they can focus on, be on the wall. Um, warming up, jump rope this is real big with our, our goalies. I went to high school with a guy um, who, a little hefty, you know, junior year, he wanted to play Division One lacrosse. All he did was jump rope. He would work out and jump. Going to Navy, so obviously it's kind of a different breed. You know, he had that inner inner push, but we strongly believe jump rope, ladders, and cone drills. Defenseman, you know, it's not you know not, um, not maybe the sexiest drills. You know, play wall ball, pass, shoot, do all that stuff. But with defensemen, you know the defense, but if you can't be in the proper position to win a battle on the edge or have a proper you know, it's, it's kind of all for naught. So all these little things, shooting, you know. Week where you know what we can get a lot of shots from inside. Yeah, they, they love the slide. They get a lot of shots from inside. Want to give you guys a couple of inside shooting drills. We have a lot of opportunities inside. That's going to be our main focus. When you guys get out there, you do 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day of inside shooting. Give them a couple of drills, and that way they can just stay in there from 10 yards, flat-footed, chucking the ball, or defensemen are sitting there talking to each other. You're using this time now, obviously. To Doing it to their full their um, full desire, but outside of practice, these guys are getting better. Now, when you get out there, rope unit, the, the short stick D-Middies, One of the things that we struggled with last year, we would run by guys, and then we just assume that they just behind, or we would try to dodge attack man at the midline, and are down. I have to attack and run right by him. We get stripped. More often than not, that's a failed clear. More often than not, a failed clear ends up in the back of your own net. Back in, kind of the wind out of your sails. So one thing that we started doing was uh, going to the camp when you're in like fourth grade. 
all the guys lined up, one guy with the ball, and the guys would, you know, not beat him, but, you know, they would throw his crazy checks every, every day before practice for 15, 20 minutes, whatever it was, and just hammer which is something I kind of, uh, you know, certainly learned here as a player and as a coach. We're doing the same thing too long and too much, but these guys knew, and after a while, that important. You know, you, you do a great job playing defense. The job isn't done until right, with our attackmen or our middies. And we were doing a good job of stopping the ball, but we were not doing a good job of getting it out of our end. So that was something that we had to hammer home. Um, there was one week in particular where we were struggling clearing the ball. Our middies were breaking. For whatever reason, couldn't handle our D middies. So put them on, you know, put a fence, you know, they were at the fence, they would sprint at me, and I would fire balls at them. You know, obviously make sure not to hit them, but I would throw them right at their stick, off, low, to show these guys this is a great job of stopping the ball as a unit. It's not done though until it's all the way to the off. So a couple of things like that where we really had to absolutely hammer it home. Drills. I've got 10 minutes, I'm gonna try to fit in three things. I got 10 minutes, I'm gonna particular thing we're gonna do it for 10 minutes straight and again it's not necessarily you know because again even with us you know we only have two and a half sometimes two and a half hours we've got so many other things that we have to work on taking 10 minutes it doesn't really you know the only have time for that so that's before practice or practice that's when you can get those you know 10 sometimes 15 minutes if you're lucky we can just hammer one thing home you do that a now you got an extra 30, 45, or an hour in of working on that one your guy's back. Um, special teams, obviously, offensively, different, but defensively, some of the things we work on. So to recap, up top, you know, getting out there, hey, these are things we got to work on this week, or things that every, you can do every single day better. You know, I'm, still, I'm playing now 10 years after college, and I'm on the wall constantly. The, the wall routine that I have these guys doing is something that I've always you practice once a week, so if you kind of figure out a lot of wall routines that you can do, you're ready to go. And so this is some; these are things that you can do, whether it's for a particular game that you have that week, or just in general for making sure your players are increasing their skills that they can have. So when you're, if you're not there, they're out there being productive. And then this could be flipped. Guys stick around and do this, and you're there early. But something, okay, this is what the group. We've got to hammer this home. We've got to get this. We're, we're close, but we just keep our guard down at the attackman or when we're breaking back to the ball you know we're, we're starting to pass whatever it might be one more thing that you can work on with the small group then why is still there when they ask you a question here that we have from the see, uh, see how good you are on your feet this is unrehearsed <laughs> all right us uh when you use uh, what do you use to get those info in the hands of players uh web Dropbox, and uh, then the second question would be for all of us, should we have for middle school and high school players? Computer and I can address the second half of that one. Uh, if you would address the Can I go to the second one and the first one? Sure. Yes, you can. Catch it and throw it. To these guys, uh, the amount of time would be my first job out of college. I worked with the company the Lacrosse. What's up, Brian Boyle? Uh, and so I would travel around to different programs, practices in the tri-state area. And uh, I want to work out, well, you know, our main office is really struggling. You know, I want to put in a, you know, one three two to a one to a deuces look. You know, I got there and, you know, some kids were holding their stick upside down. You know, it's like, you guys, for one, you're, you're middle school. Don't worry about winning games or really care about the development of the player, right? And you really want them to enjoy the game with the game and hopefully to continue playing the game worry about catching and throwing you can't catch and throw <laughs> it's just not fun right forget winning and losing it's just if i've got the ball and someone's open and there's a 25 percent vice versa i'm open the ball's coming to me like, oh my god please don't drop it so just hammering home picking up ground balls right don't worry about anything else so to the the, the Middle school and high school, maybe high school, the expectations should change a little bit, but make sure the guys can catch and throw. There is nothing, whatever I were, were, I don't care what, how much they left knowing, if they at least knowing better at catching and throwing, or at least had drills to get better at it, that's what I was happy with. I get stuff into the hands of players. Obviously, now most people have, everybody does, but most people probably have email, so we're talking. 
um, Google Docs, emails. Um, best ones would be Google Docs and email. Everybody, that's a, a staple that most people would have. I know there's different, depending on your budget that you have. Um, what we have Teamworks, which is a local Duke man, Zach Marides, created. It allows, you, know, you can send out not just emails, but text messages, you know, timed, um, at, you know, tomorrow at 8 a.m. Everybody, and there's a meeting at this time, and uh, it's also a way to send it. Uh, but the Google Docs, I've played for teams where that was it. Uh, GroupMe is a good way to communicate. A lot of the teams that I still play on a way of communicating. Uh, it's a free app, so everybody can communicate that way. Docs uh, are also something where you can kind of have your team ethos, your terminology, um, your terminology meaning your, uh, your offensive sets. So that way, it's it's a living and breathing right there. Anybody, and uh, any at any point you can go and, and check it. Uh, we're gonna have one more here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nett. All right. Uh, none of those are our sponsor, by the way. We're open to any sponsorships. So Huddle or any of the people that we've talked about, Teamworks, if you're interested, if you're interested in sponsoring the Duke uh, Men's Cross Clinics, uh, please. All right, Scott Hopsicker from Western New York. Um, asks, when you attack a man down defense, is it based on your concepts or on the defense you're facing? Do you allow the defense to dictate or do you run your EMO regardless of the D? All right, and so uh, I'm going to let Matt Danowski answer this, but I'm going to kind of set it up a little bit. In general, you should prepare for um, defend behind the goal, teams that won't defend behind the goal, use some junk. Meaning, are they going to shut off your best? Are they shutting off a position on the field? Meaning, sometimes people, uh, you, you know, uh, if you're playing a one-four-one, they'll just shut off the up top. You know, or is it personnel-driven? So, you know, in terms of pairing in the preseason, you should have an, a, 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 a when teams play really soft. And when teams are going to pressure the ball or pressure behind the cage, prepared to throw you some junk, how then will you, you know, you so there are three, you know, we think there are three different types of um, extra man. Um, I would agree with that. I would say that, but best for your team. Um, you know, if you only have one plays you could run. Right, if you have two really good inside finishers, then yeah, then maybe you can run a one-four-one. But at the end of the day, you worry about you and what you would you guys do best, as opposed to worrying about what every practice. You can scout them all you want, and they can be practicing them different the entire week. You get to the game, and it's completely different. The coach, the players go, "Well, it's not what we practice." And you say, "Yeah, you're right. Screwed up." Right. So you have to, you have to do what you're really good at it, and eventually you can teach the kids the why. Right. Eventually at something you can say, all right, this is a four man. This is why this works. This is what the defense is. This is why this works. This is a string. This is why we do this. Yes, eventually you can get to that point, but at some point you have something to fall back on because you play and there's only 15 seconds left and they lock somebody and to do because you, know, you don't have something to fall back on, then at the end of the day, that's on you. You have to figure out what your team is good at, what kind of couple shooters if you just have one shooter if you have a couple feeders if you have so you got to eventually get yourself to good at something so people have to be preparing for everybody that you play we just kind of roughly we glanced on this before we're going to go a little more. but in general if you got to have the minimum if this is all right, tight budgets and you know you don't have a lot Whistles, watches, and balls for you. If you have a whistle, you have a watch to keep your players on task. Before, I think Coach Caputo had mentioned this uh, earlier when we talked, just uh, in preparation for uh, maybe, like for us, no drill is really longer than any 12 minutes. 
Uh, one, because we want to get a lot of things accomplished. Uh, the attention span of the coaching staff. No, the expression, hey, let's teach one thing. Let's, let's be really intense on the next thing. Uh, for you, it might be six minutes or five minutes, or for you, it might be and that's something that you have to negotiate, but if you want to get everything that you want done, watch and somebody's going to have to keep the staff on task. You know, there are, there are certain, uh, say, hey, we're staying out here until we get it right. You know, remember the Titans, and uh, they put the cars out there with the car headlights out, and uh, they were going to practice that until they got it right. You know, until PD uh, and the Rev the quarterback and Petey was a tailback and until they got that right there now that is certainly one uh, philosophy but you know watches keep us on task balls keep the drills moving chase and collect and wait for another ball plenty of balls plenty of repetition the drills hot alright um, it's important to know before you go out there how much field space? Am I sharing it with, uh, have half of it? Uh, my coaching the girls team and the boys have the half. Am I, you know, my coaching a So you can plan your practice according to the field space that you have. Then you go out there and you have less than you thought or one looks to you, what do we do now, coach? So you need to be ready. And if you don't know what you have, then you need two plans. Half field. So that you're not surprised by anything, okay? And your kids will, see and then they'll flow. They follow the leader. If you look angry because oh we don't have any fields, then that's what they'll be saying when they're walking in the halls. Ah, oh, nobody cares about us. We don't have fields. We don't have this. It's all positive. There's no excuse with you. So know what you have and be prepared. Um, team priorities. Idea of a standard. It's not. What we roll. We get out there and we don't, like, you shouldn't be seeing kids sitting on a cooler waiting for you to walk out there. You know, we work. Find something to do. And then you, you've had if you're an offensive player, you're doing this. The defensive player is whoever the leader is. And he does a footwork drill. The offensive guys are on the wall. There's a shooting on when you walk out there. Now, they shouldn't shoot on the goal. The goalie should be in stick drills with them. The face-off guy can be doing But in, in terms of that, we, we need to be better behavior for when we get out there. There should be nobody sitting around. I'm riding ground balls. I felt when I coached, and I coached U11, U, U9, I coached that, I, I always felt that the most important things Balls, defense, and riding. I always felt those were the, the three pillars of the first three days. Because the game, and at that level, it's on the ground a lot. So how to pick it up. They know how, need to have, to have this chasing, chasing because, it's, again, it's going to be on the ground a lot. And what to do when the other team picks it up. Not allow them to get behind us. The, the, the reason for these three is these are effort. These are the so you can create your 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 standards of effort. So now when you do get to the passing and catching, if you, if Johnny and it hits the ground, he runs and chases it because that was the standard that was created instead of him standing there looking for another ball to pull out of the bag. The standard created. Ball hits the ground, we go get it, no matter how far it is, no matter unless a coach tells you otherwise. So I always like to start with defense, riding, put away. Instead of slamming our sticks on the floor and yelling at each other, get in ride mode. That's a stand. It takes effort. We can ride. We can hustle. We can chase and check. And defense is an attitude. So you're creating the attitude of your team in the first practice by doing defense, riding, and ground balls. Position attack. Def defense for attack is riding, you know, midfielders are and they play offense and, and defensively you can chase people and getting the ball to the ground, which is the phase you started out in the beginning of practice. 
or, and offensively is clearing too, so the defensive guy's got to handle. That's when the passing and catching is important. You've got to create a standard for that. We call it 11 and 1 passing. If you had a clock on a wall and 11 o'clock was here and 1 o'clock was here, bring it to 1 and release it. Catch it, bring it back and release it. Okay, we tell our guys, teammate shoulder, and right in his helmet, in his helmet area. Bring it back, let it go. Catch it, let it go. Catch it, let it go. And that creates a Okay, that's where we want to pass the ball. Now, if you guys have a guy in your stick work, Coach Nowski actually used to do this. He would uh, have a catch with that guy. And wherever that guy threw him the ball, he threw it out. The guy threw it out his waist, Coach Nowski threw it his waist. The guy threw it down here, Coach Nowski would catch it. You know, the guy got the hint. Maybe I should put it up here. And Coach him start having a good Actually, I think he did that camp, maybe, or was that Hofstra? I don't remember, but I remember him doing that. But that we want to pass and catch. And you start, you start um, standing still. Always a big believer when I coach that having your ball in your stick matters. Like, we didn't stretch without our sticks. We stretched with a ball. If I had 27 guys, 27 guys had balls, and when they did stretching, <laughs> they were cradling. And I got it to the point where I had them next to each other, and they would go down and they would throw it to each other. Always touching the ball, even when they were 11 years old. Like, throwing to someone all the time. Hour and a half practice, always with a ball. When we did sprints, we did sprints with a ball. I incorporated ground ball training. Um, you know what, Coach, you probably go over the full quarters idea. These guys practice. But everything with a the ball, they get used to it different than when you see great basketball players they're always walking to you know football players when they have when they fumble the ball too much what are the, the ball feeling it in your stick always so I, I I started practice with the attitude stuff the balls defense riding and then as practice went on I got more to the skill development that you know if, if we tried real hard and we had a good culture, we always, and that we could always get better in the passing and catching stuff. All right, here's a, here's a good one. This is for Mike's on them. All right, we talk a lot about X's and O's on great, but uh, do you have any feedback on how to prepare players to be mentally tough when the stress level what are the things that you guys do as coaches to keep everyone level-headed the best? All right? This would be a great one. Uh, I'll start. And uh, first of all, it's, it, uh, it starts from the top. If the coach loses his mind, it's a tendency for the players to lose their mind a little bit. And you have to want to certainly keep them focused. And, you know, people say, you know, like my MO kind of is you're always so cool and really inside I'm not. <coughs> Excuse me. But I recognized a long time ago that if I start being distracted by officials, by an opponent, by a mistake, all the players are going to see that. Players on the field are going to see that and feel that. <coughs> Pardon me. As a coach, you know, I can't allow that to happen. Second, we believe more pressure we can put on them in practice, the more competitions we can do. We, we do things we call where during the week we'll face off and we'll say game to one. And there'll be a consequence, winning and losing. So if a team, you know, is a team loses, but we'll do, it takes maybe three minutes, five minutes, but we'll play a game to one. And then once that, you know, somebody makes celebrates, you know, that play. So we try to mimic it. Uh, those situations, and then we hope that our guys are found that they rely on their fundamentals. There's a saying that we learned from the Navy SEALs that we don't rise to the fall back on our training. That's nothing that we control, but we just fall back on our training. And and the thing we say when we get into overtime is we try to tell the guys, listen. You play to win, and you don't look back. If you make a play or you don't make a play, but you're not going to think about it, you will. And that's, that's kind of how we approach it. I mean, I think you 
you said a lot of what you would all say, but I would also, uh, um, you know, the fear of failure is a hot topic right now. Why are my teammates down? I don't want the coach down. I don't want to be embarrassed. Um, and, you know, the kids have to know that coach down and their teammates, so they're not trying to let people down, right? So you can eradicate the fear of failure by having a, a simply frank conversation. We've had that with our guys this fall. Mask, um, not doing anything uh, because they say, I don't want to let my team nervous for this reason. Um, and really, well, it's an excuse. So we try to get you know that you're not trying to drop the ball, right? Everybody can pass and catch at this level. So let's just, the fundamental base is really high. You'll never play poorly, really. Uh, practice has to matter, right? Practice has to be demanding. Otherwise, what are you out there for? Right, the practice has to matter for something. You don't have to really do that much coaching. You can kind of sit back and be relaxed and be cool. Had a good week of practice, but if practice is just the time to get together and to kind of have you know fun and enjoy yourselves, then you know you're going to pull your hair out when time the game it means something. It's got to matter, and that's when you should be all over them, demanding perfection, doing it right. So when the game comes around, you can say, "Listen, we did it all week." You know, so uh, we talk about that a lot as well. well. This is real quick for me. I, I've said this for a long time. I, I really believe this, that faith is And the, the problem is the fear part is that they're naturally nervous. They're naturally scared, and it's, it's, it comes easy to be scared, okay? But the faith is instilled, and that's why those standards, it's hard. But their faith in you is greater than their fear of failing. If they believe that you believe in them and, you believe, and they believe in what you do, well, they can still win. I mean, if, if you really watch championship both teams are usually nervous. It's the team that relaxes first that ends up being okay. And I, I just think that it's instilled in what you do every day. You know, like the ball in the last seconds of the game. It should be instilled. And when they don't, it makes you wonder sometimes. You know? You know, and that's, and that's competition. Uh, very few teams go undefeated. V very few teams in any sport, um, you know, do that. And um, you can see it in professional sports, and you see it, uh, you know, you see it everywhere. That, uh, but it's, it's being in the competition and, and being part and hoping that they feel really good about that. They feel really good that it's overtime. It's a one goal game. It's a eating and playing. Um, and again, as Coach said, in the, Coach Donowski said, it's trust in the preparation. It's Coach Caputo, trust in the faith of what you're being taught. And with, even if you lose, it's still trust in all those things. Because sometimes the ball just bounces a funny way. You know, a call goes the other way. Somebody slips and falls down. Happen, and, and certainly all of us who have been around the game long enough have, have seen that. All right, so now that we have your preseason, we have your daily priorities. What are those things that absolutely you prioritize? Now, look, these are just some things that we wrote down that we prioritize, but what are the things that you prioritize? I've got, we've got 15 days before the first game. You've got game, 10 days, 6, whatever it is, what do you prioritize in order to help your team be successful? Uh, so this is the whole part. Talk about the whole, right? So when the ball's on the ground on the offensive end, does everybody come to the ball, right? So when the guy who picks it up, does he have an adjacent left and right and on the offensive end? So that's, we do that every day in some capacity. Out there, just going over Adjacent one direction, and then adding another guy, and having a then adding six guys eventually. So we have an idea of what we're doing when the ball's you know, especially for you high school guys who just coach for two weeks, then play a game. The ball is going to be on the ground, windy. It's going to be not great stick skills, and offensively, off the ground on the offensive end. Uh, the stick skills piece we talk about. We we do it stationary, we do it dynamic, we do it by position practice most of you guys don't but prioritize what it what it is the attack when you got to practice catching while moving right middies you got to practice 
passing and throwing the ball forward, throwing it inside, throwing it through, whatever it is that's in your offense, sit and prioritize it and how you think it's going to happen the most. Um, offense in the season, spacing is key, right? You might, not have, you might not have to run past people if everybody's in the right spot. If you got an inside guy and you got a through, the ball could bounce to you on the crease because you're properly spaced. X inside and it can bounce your way because you're properly spaced, right? So if you have really good field balance early in the season, it can help you with ground balls, it can help you back up shots in the end line, it can help you with miss lose the ball over the midfield line because you got some middies who are by the restraining line as opposed to having free, right? So if you have an idea of what you're doing in terms of your spacing, uh, it can help you out early in the season. And on that, you know, what goes with that is just ball speed on the perimeter, right? If you draw a slide, can you throw the so the ball speed is faster than the body speed of the defense, right? And the shooting, you know, we don't get to as much of it early in the season. You kind of get back. You got to work in some sort of shooting within your offense every day, right? Goalie, we usually do without a goalie. If you can get a goalie in there, a live goalie, that's great. But if not, are you going to do mostly for the game, right? If you're playing an early season game, if you think you can get a lot of practice, shooting four and three with your feet set, practice going up the hash and practice through. Not going to win any face-offs, and you got to hold the ball. Then you got to do a lot of inside shooting. You got to do inside on six piece. So uh, you know, for us, that's kind of how we break it down. What we're going to do uh, in the preseason, but I think the biggest key, especially is the spacing and the ball speed. If you're properly spaced, again, you don't have to slide to score goals. Right? As soon as somebody looks at you or you step off a little too much, inside and some through stuff, just by being in the right position. That's it. In terms of your motion as well. So if you don't, if you can't go live because uh, you don't have enough eyes, or you just played a scrimmage the day before, you can do that skeleton, and you can you can um, in, in your passing drills, you can nail it in your spacing, and your shooting drills, and skeleton, and then in a thud period, you know, depending on how many guys you have. So help you out offensively, maintain possession of the ball, and then put you in a position to be successful. Your daily priorities, you know, once again, um, you hold to be important. What we hold to be important, again, perspective, you know, at the college level. Uh, but again, you may, you may just pare it down to two or three. Uh, it may be one, you know, but whatever you think, uh, whatever that priority is, whatever you want your team to look like at the end of the season or, or the first excuse me, first game, and that you put a, just a tremendous emphasis on. Actually, I was going to start with, you said at the end of the season, and we found that usually more often than not, successful at the end of the season, you know, for us the past couple of years, unfortunately, the final four, and then things, we screwed things up that we weren't done day one. Uh, really creeping. You, know, you don't want to stand up and have your chest to the ball. You want to be down low like the two slide and where I'm sliding to. Uh, we want to create a slide angle, and then come out to your, and then come out to the, the the guy you're sliding to. A couple times in the final four, easy goals. Uh, our hot guy is set up, so we can see both. Has his chest to the ball. Guy cuts right behind his head. All the things that we. So it is kind of the basic fundamentals, but it's also the things that we talk. About, maybe it's a Twitter question. Um, high pressure situations. Work on day one is the things that we want you to, you know, and also about the whole year. So in, in the high pressure situations, those become what you fall back on. Because in the big, in the big moments, it's very rarely, oh, we have a little crazy play and that's why we won. It's more often than not, who can play? Play with two hands. Step away, you know, um, hands on ground balls. Kind of keep their head. Um, and like I said, it keeps. So again, uh, defensively, communication. And we, we should, isn't just talking, it's also listening, uh, which is big with us. You know, somebody, that guy's talking, but the guy he's talking to isn't listening at all. Oh, I didn't hear him. Instead of turning so we can hear the man, see and hear the man, he's got, he's not worried about anything going on behind him. He's not, he, he, he's not seeing this. He can't hear this. is all for not. Um, Ground balls. Last year we were very good at getting the ball on the deck, but then not getting not turnover, or we almost created a turnover, but then we couldn't come up with the ground ball. 
not just ground balls, but also goosing it. Obviously, with a long pole with a lot of traffic, being able to get the up and get it upfield. Um, obviously, overpasses, things like that. Um, communication, uh, creeping. All right, we talked about talked about a little bit at the start. We call it creeping, where you know, guy's off ball, he stands straight up, and he's oh, my guy doesn't. I don't have to be ready, which is quite the opposite. We want our guys down. One as an offensive player, you read that body language. It's significantly more. Uh, second, you know, especially at our level now, it takes time to move it. If you're creeped, you can be here. You can move easily side to side. And you have to move, whether it's a through ball or you're sliding, you can go. You're a step or two behind. It takes too long. Um, but, you know, another thing that's set up here is owl technique, right? Again, you see it all, all the time with our freshmen. Somebody's got the ball, so they're staring at the ball, the ball watching, instead of man, ball, man, ball, constantly having their head on a swivel. Even with their older guys, there's so much going on, and, you know, the guys at this level, and really, you know, you know high school, the guys with the ball are so good, but you've you got to make sure you know what that is. But the ability to feed, so you have to always know, where's your man, where's the ball? And, yeah, that's it. Creeping, out technique. And uh, communication are kind of our big things. Again, communication, not. And that's next. I have a, I have a great question. Um, and it's a little bit off topic, but I think we can. Favorite Irish pub on Long Island. <laughs> you know? You know, uh, could answer that one. Could go first. <laughs> It just says. <laughs> um, my favorite Irish Long Island, probably BK Sweeney's. Yeah, BK Sweeney's uh, has done a great job of the sponsoring um, the the lacrosse event that they have uh, they have on Long Island. They do a great job of uh, getting people out to the uh, to Giant Stadium, also. Home game, so that's a great group. Um, I'm going to say maybe the St. James Infirmary over there by uh, Winthrop Hospital in Mineola. Uh, uh, a favorite of the Chaminade faculty, I believe. Um, but great one as well. Garden City staff, too. Right? <laughs> uh, as we move on here, okay. Now you got to look at the, the, you know, micro, macro, Right, so then you get your weekly priorities. So you say to yourself, you're starting the first practice, but you know, live in the moment, stay where your feet are, all the cliches. And then you got to say, where do I want to be at the end of the week? What are my priorities for this group of kids at this year? You can go back on your notes from years past. It's dangerous. It's a new group. You may have a new coaching staff group of kids, they may be more advanced, they may be less advanced. Pair them to another group and to hold them to hold them to the fire last year would be unfair to that group. So okay. Um, first one we have up here is okay. goalie makes a save, the defense picks up a ground ball. What do we do? We have to get spaced. I remember we were coaching team, uh, myself and my friend Dan Levy, and he said, what are we going to call the step yelling was spots. So I said, the clear is named. Everybody get to their spot. And we would yell spots in the spots. And then we would practice. We're going to throw the ball here. Then we're going to throw it here. And we right? So that now, now you have your standards and your terminology. What is the throw the ball over? What does redirect mean? Throw it to the goalie spot in the field, you know, uh, the away from the box was called Frisco, it was called Boston. And then we'd yell X, because that was the face-off X, so those were three spots. So we, we would, floater was the man in the middle, so we would say, hit the floater, hit the spot, and we would just line them up, roll the ball, have someone pick it up, yell spots, goalie yell who should catch the ball. He would yell redirect to himself, then he would yell corner, then he would yell floater, then he would yell Frisco, then he would yell X, so we got used to 
So you guys need to understand, or your girls, you need to understand when the ball gets picked up. So that needed to happen off of a ball, and then we'd say, all right, they throw it out of bounds. The other team throws it out of bounds. And we everybody runs to their spot, pick it up, same kind of thing. And we did it. A lot of times, in the beginning of the season, you can because you clear the ball. Failed clears lead to goals. Defense all day, and it just your kids get tired, and then they stop creeping like Coach. Mistakes get made because they're tired, or, or because they're just stopped them three or four times, and they couldn't get it out. Um, organization, it's important to have calls. You, you may, you may want to say, I don't know, when you want to just get it around. 60. 60. We say the word 60 before we do anything. And what does 60 mean to those kids? In the perimeter, does that mean five guys on the perimeter? Does that, like, should go on with the attack and know where they stand in 60? And they touch it, and then you yell the next thing. Whatever the play. Duke, run Tar Heel, whatever it is, and they run it with each midfield doing it, or each a little better. Well, I'm a little better than Tar Heel. But you run it, okay? Does it over and over and over again? Um, is you got to be able to do it over and over again, so that if if the kids see zone or they see some sort of a show, Comfortable. You don't want them to get uncomfortable. All right. The only way they're comfortable again is by doing it over and over again. Um, like it's like the first week. What are we teaching? We're teaching maybe teaching dodging and then maybe dumping, dumping the ball either inside or the other. One scheme fundamental. Defensively, we're teaching on people in a certain direction, and maybe we get to sliding. You just build it from there. So that would be probably, this is probably like the second week, I guess, second five days as we're getting to that. Fundamentals and done all that stuff. And if we have offensively, we may go into the first game with two sets on defense. And, you know, we may have some game management situations. Put in there, hey, you're down by a goal and there's a minute left and, you know, so you have those weekly priorities that you want to. Now, the other, the other thing that we, we've kind of alluded to a, a lot during own work or looking for work, but the kids that they have to own up, it's their work. It's their time. This is their team. If they're just showing up because mom signed them up or dad signed them up, so they're, they're doing the minimum, they're going to get the minimum. That Whatever you practice, you get better at. Whatever. Listen, I got you in this beautiful piano. We paid ten thousand dollars. It's in the living room, and here it is. And if you you don't get better at playing the piano, it's no different. Just or if you just take the lesson on the piano, and you just speak, and you don't practice on your own, you're not going to get better for just practice, you're not going to get better. You're going to get time on your own. So it's instilling right? And to prepare on their own. And where does that I turn us over to the coach uh, who kind of mentioned uh, a little bit, but uh, I'll let you talk about the Instagram video. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff out there for the kids. I'm not on Instagram, but they are. It's like quick shooting videos, quick wall ball videos, quick foot. I was just messing around today, and uh, I went on YouTube, and I, I drills for defensemen. And boom, a bunch of stuff popped up. It's, it's all None of it's bad. I mean, the kids can get better doing it in their backyard on videos. I mean, some, some people have a little bit different technique than we do, and first... You can text them to your guys and say, hey, this is the most like we would like you to do it. Um, the wall work, again, you can put together a soft hands wall work 
video, you can have your best and put it on your own Instagram page, or you can email it to your whole team um, with, you, with one of your best guys, and then just send it to the rest of the guys. You can do this in your backyard. You can do this with one friend. You can, this is something teammates or three other teammates. You can do all that and then it's, it, it becomes that you've created over the, the years that you've been coaching. Adding to it and adding to it. And uh, the weight room and sports performance, um, I don't know if they should be doing that alone, I, it, but if, you know, kids certainly run by themselves and, you know, kids can, a lot of kids have uh, gym memberships and stuff like that. Some kids out with their folks, but as long as they're doing something and showing some effort on their own that they're looking for work and they're looking for I think is the key. And I would say this on the bottom, it's this, this, this is true and it's true today, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. No matter what age, if you can do a push-up and a sit-up and a pull-up and, and you're just fine. Great. Coming down to the end here, the last couple minutes. Now, so first game has come and gone, and I think most of you, not unlike us, play Tuesday, Friday, play Wednesday, Saturday. You have a short week. Makes it very difficult, right? Turnarounds. You know, um, if I just uh, I just saw a, a college team schedule tonight, and midweek game for them. Uh, we have one during our of a Friday, Sunday during the regular season. Uh, and if we're uh, to qualify for the ACC tournament, uh, we play two games, you know, in a, in a weekend. So um, we're, we're in some ways, we're a little similar to you, but, but not. Uh, so how do you, you know, how do you rebound from emotional wins or tough losses? You know, those emotional losses. But you know your best player got dinged up, or you know you and you lost, and your whole team is beat up. The other guy, and 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 so you know, and how do you rebound after those kind of the balance between the preparation for your opponent? You know, Coach Danowski had mentioned that before, and team's improvement. Just working on the things that you want to work on. Not really worry so much. Well, uh, Coach Crowdy, uh, I'd asked him. We were looking. It's a quote from John Wooden or not, but you know John Wooden believed that you know he had a man offense, he had a zone offense, he had a press offense. I don't think they ever played zone, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But they were able to press. They had that two-two-one press that they made famous with quicks. Remember those guys? And uh, and so they were really good at really good. At so whatever they faced, coach felt like that they were prepared. If if uh, if you know if if it's you know as as coach mentioned, zone offense and that one zone that man offense and you know how to make ten, you know ten man ride or a deep deep ride and you know how to um, you know does that prepare you regardless of who your opponent is whatever they're going to throw at you and uh, you know those to balance, but those short weeks are difficult, you know, um, film, uh, skeleton, non-contact drills, walkthroughs, uh, you know, going over mistakes from the day before. We're big on, when we play on Saturday, it's dedicated to us. After we watch the film, we new drills, we come up with things during the day, we say, listen, we're not good at that is, and we try to get better at that right away. And we try to get better at that. So maybe if only one or two guys weren't good at it, it doesn't matter. Make a, we try to make that an emphasis, and we, we try to drill that a lot. Um, maybe a day off required. You know, maybe that's, you know, after getting, you know, physically tossed around a little bit, back excited again. Usually when you win, it's a great time to be all over you guys, you berate them, not berate them, but you know, to really give them a hard And here's the time when you gotta love them up. Those guys are terrific, you played hard, you celebrate all the 
the things that they did and just continue to work on you know getting better but that's where you know you start to you know you start to play those aren't mind games. those are um, mind games <laughs> no I mean those are but those are need to hear people need to hear those things you know after a win or after a win, I can still hear my mother in my head masculine mother you know don't get big-headed don't don't and she was really one for keeping us you know very very in terms of that preseason uh, and then well this is preseason but this is Oh, this is post-practice. This was kind of out of sequence a little bit. I apologize. I'll just take this here since we're kind of running over time here a little bit. This is uh, this is own work again, and it's it could be either scheduled or spontaneous. Meaning, hey, every day after practice, is what we do. All right, defenseman, you got to get on the wall for dominant hand. Notice I didn't say we can't because I don't want to trigger any of our students. Maybe anybody feels sad that um, we're calling them weak. It's non-dominant with their non-dominant hand, and they got to go on that wall for five minutes. It's they got to shoot for five minutes. They've got to take 50 shots. A couple of a couple of guys were going to feed the ball, and maybe on Monday the, the midfield shoots, or Wednesday the defenseman shoot, or you know whatever it is, or it could be spontaneous. It could be something that you saw. You say, hey, Tommy, you know what? You have to get on the wall. And maybe it's coach, or maybe it's just on his own, but that happens at the end. Maybe it's just a routine. Maybe it's just that routine of getting them, getting in the habit of at the end when I'm tired, I've got to shoot. I can't drop my hands. I have to keep my hands up, or I've got to concentrate and focus. Two hour practice, um, I've, got, I've got to put in those extra five minutes. Because then you say to them, hey, listen, you know, we're going to have 40 practices over the course of the year. And if I spend five minutes before every practice, if I spend 500, five minutes after, after practice, that's another 200 minutes. That's 400 minutes. 406, that's 360 all right that's what that's almost seven hours just with five minutes a clip if I do that every day will I get better of course you will all right it could be a routine so that's one way to and this is the same thing if it's super be that coach that's working uh, you know with the guys every day the guys at the end of practice 10 minutes shooting bang does a Think is appropriate that day all right it could be that he saw that he works with and then again it's it's a good take your goalies Monday Wednesday and Friday uh, coach Caputo will take the goalies and he'll shoot on them while is, is working with the uh, shooters coach Caputo was working uh, Crotty is working with the defenseman shooting and coach Caputo Maybe he's working with the face-off guys. I'm working with the goalies. Separate group shooting. You know, once again, routine, five minutes uh, of practice. And again, for us, we have, the, we have the four coaches. For you, one group, and the other three groups have their routines that they That's the end of the official practice, that extra work them that extra little boost to say hey we're doing the extra all right to quote there is no traffic you know mile. right I kind of like them right. hey we want to say good luck in 2020 if you need here are our secret all right that you can contact any of you guys out there in the Twitter sphere, out there in the digital, this will be out there. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. All players for us. If you got that six four kid who runs a, four, he benches three hundred pounds. He squats five or six, and um, 
He's got a tr he's the quarterback of the football team. He's a, I don't know, he's a point forward on the basketball team, or he's a guy, maybe a wrestler, maybe he runs a, you know, give us a, you know, give us a shout, all right? But if you're interested in sponsoring, you know, in any part of these clinics, uh, you know, we would certainly welcome anybody who wants to sponsor uh, or donation to the Duke Lacrosse program. Uh, feel, please feel free to the Varsity Club. Reach out to any one of us, uh, that, or if we can help you, team uh, with uh, any uh, insights that we could offer, uh, we'd be delighted to. Uh, all kidding aside, but uh, very three offers uh, that I made. <laughs> All right. And that's it. Oh, we got that lesson in humility out of there. Oh, you took that one out of there. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, we do want to uh, She's done an absolutely spectacular job. Uh, the first uh, had a total of over, I think it's over 8,000 um, you know, for this fall, and that far, um, that far, um, you know, in these last couple of years, just doing it kind of locally on, on go. So they'll be archived. Please let your friends know um, that they're out there, and uh, we, we've been, we really have a lot of fun. Uh, wishing everybody Christmas, very happy Hanukkah, um, whatever, uh, over, over the course of the year, very happy New Year, and again, uh, really best and reach out if we can help you at all. Thank you.